Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. Uh, the bottom line, David, is when Garrett Cole's on the mound, you expect to get a win. But they're eight and seven with Garrett Cole on the mound, and now Garrett Cole and the Yankees have had two losses in games against the Tigers and the Royals. And you know, you're gonna you're gonna rue those days. Yeah, it's hard to sustain momentum, you know, when you're building as the Yankees are and have been, and they've shown signs of going on a run, and then all of a sudden games like these kind of side saddle you, and you know, it's frustrating if you're a Yankee fan, if you follow this team, well, you you see the signs of life coming together. There's so many good stories. Gary Sanchez right at the top of the list. Garrett Cole struggles in terms of getting run support, kind of at the top of the list now too. All right, so let's talk about Garrett Cole. I thought he looked pretty good again. The last couple of starts, the strikeouts, the double digit strikeouts, they're not there but he's kind of found another way. Well, he does. You know, Garrett Cole knows how to pitch, you know, and he's made adjustments on the fly as well as anybody in the American League this year, in my opinion, just watching him. The use of the changeup, the use of the slider, he seems to find pitches that work early in the game and then go to them. Tonight it was a slider, as you noted. He got That was his best pitch in terms of swings and misses, and when he really needed a strikeout, even though only, you know, he only had six, uh, he went to that slider. Now, one problem for the Yankees, and this has been a problem all year, is getting big hits with runners in scoring position. The Yankees had several chances tonight to break the game open. And just to take a look at one small snapshot, when they had the runner at third, fewer than two outs, they didn't get a hit. They scored on a wild pitch. That's been a problem all year. So they were 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position tonight, including in the ninth inning. And then they left 13 runners on base. Yeah, you know, it usually, you know, we talk about the Yankees. We've talked about early in the year is them missing pitches to hit. You know, the meatball, the ball down the middle that they fouled off or just missed. Tonight, that wasn't the case. It was them chasing out of the zone, especially in the ninth inning. Holland striking Frazier out on a pitch up and out of the zone certainly would have changed the complexion of that ninth inning. And then in those bases loaded situations, Stanton swinging at the first pitch on balls in off the plate just a bit. So I saw some overzealousness, a little over anxiousness, and the Yankees chasing pitches out of the zone especially in situations where they really needed good at-bats. And even though things went wrong and they left all those runners on base, it's about this much from tying the game with Aaron Judge. That's the that's the plus side here is the Yankees never died here, and now they're showing signs of life that they can come back in these types of games. They almost stole that one back after giving it away in the top of the eighth inning. So certainly, you know, you feel better about the overall chances of the lineup. Luke Voigt back, a big lift. We certainly haven't seen the full Monty with Sanchez in the lineup. What's it going to look like? Can Stanton play left field? You know, we're going to see that in the future. I mean, we really haven't seen the full maximum lineup when they're lined up, especially now that Gary Sanchez is back on top of his game, what that lineup's going to look like. And we should take a closer look before we go at that inning with Jonathan Lewisig on the mound. Although he did give up hits in big situations, he was not helped by Tyler Wade. Yeah, you know, and to me, that's hard to put on Tyler Wade. That was not the easiest play up the middle. He had to travel to his backhand and wheel and deal. That's a hard throw. The hop was right there. It was a short hop. Usually, DJ LeMahieu will make that. A normal first baseman will. But the ball took off like it hit a rock or had some spin on it. So a little bit of unusualness on that one. I can't blame Tyler Wade for that one. The tough play, too, at home. Maybe a little bit of a hesitation there, but not especially egregious. I mean, it really, it would have taken a bang-bang play to even have a chance at home. So certainly, you know, those are not easy chances on Tyler Wade defensively. And the throw home was an absolute bullet. And obviously the, the tag was just a, a smidge late. And again, Loazica, who we're so used to being seeing him be almost perfect he did give up big hits well he did and it seemed like the Royals had a good approach they were ready for that two-seamer in and normally Loisaga buries that two-seamer into right-handed batters he didn't quite get it in Whit Merrifield hit one to start it off Dozier hit one later in that inning uh, as certainly the two-seamer to San Santana was up and out over the plate that he laced off the wall the other way so some hard hit balls along with some ground balls that found holes off of Loisaga it was a little bit of a Murphy's Law inning for him all right two more games to go in the series obviously they'll try to even things up tomorrow night and then the series finale on thursday afternoon ryan